I'm delighted to be joined by uh, the scientist John Edmonds, member of the body that uh, advises the government, SAGE. Um, John, um, you were somebody, along with fellow members of SAGE, who uh, have been re recommending for some time uh, a lockdown. We're living through this new phase of lockdown. Infection figures seem to be moving in the right direction. How encouraged should we be? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the numbers are coming down a little bit. I, I, I think that probably by the end of this lockdown period, we will see a, some decline in cases. I think it's going to be relatively modest, not as much as some of us hoped. I mean, I hope maybe slightly more than this. But I, th I do think we'll see some decline uh, in new cases, probably more in the north than in the south. Um, but, you know, and, and then, of course, the declines in hospitalizations and, and deaths will, will follow. Um, so there's obviously an enormous amount of talk at the moment about a freeing up again over Christmas. Um, lots of people watching, hoping that they'll have a few more freedoms at Christmas. Should we be preparing for, I mean, not a normal Christmas, but something that feels sort of normal? Uh, I don't think it will be quite normal, unfortunately. I don't think that's going to be <clears throat> possible. I think uh, Christmas is, I mean, it's a great time of the year. Um, you know, it's the time when we socialise maximally. We see our old friends and family and things like that. But that, unfortunately, all carries a risk. And so I think that uh, it would be prudent not to sort of go a bit wild at Christmas, quite honestly. Um, so I think that we will have to moderate and have, yeah, a slightly a slightly disappointing Christmas, unfortunately. I mean, I, I think... But a, but a few I'm more sure freedoms than we've got at the moment, presumably, though. I mean, the, the Prime Minister keeps sort of holding out this sort of carrot that if we all follow the rules now, we can at least have a few days of seeing our loved ones. Is, is, is that a, a responsible in a sense, carrot to be offering us at this stage? Or or do you think you should be being more cautious? I think we have to see how it goes in the next few weeks. Um, you know, I think clearly that the best way that we can have a safe Christmas, and we, which we can, and the best chance we have of enjoying it um, is if we can drive cases down as low as possible. Um, now, that's a very difficult thing to do because the run-up to Christmas is, is a you know, a uh, very important part of the time of the year for many parts of our s society and economy. And so I, I don't think I th there'd be huge pressure not to, um, you know, keep restrictions in place for much longer than, than they've been sort of trailed. Um, uh, but, you know, we'll have to wait and see, see what happens, I think. I mean, just on that, I mean, the, la the latest uh, survey from the Office of National Statistics said that one in 85 people currently have the virus. That's an awful lot of people. Um, even if infections continue to tail off a bit, there are still going to be an astonishing number of people with the virus on December the 2nd when this lockdown ends. So what, in your view, should happen on December the 2nd, given there are still going to be a lot of people ill and capable of infecting other people? Yeah, I, I, this, I think it's an extremely tough decision. I, I really think the government have got a very, very tough decision. And they have to be clear about what it is. I think they have to have a clear aim. What is, that they're, what is that they're trying to achieve? Is it trying to achieve low incidence or is it some sort of uh, more moderate level of incidence and balance? Uh, you know, are we just trying to make sure that the NHS isn't overwhelmed? What's the clear aim? That would then tell you what to do next. And if the aim is to protect the NHS... And that appears to be, as you say, they're not always completely clear, but that appears to be what they're trying to do. Um, would it be responsible to move back into a tier system on December the 2nd? I think we'll need some sort of restrictions in place. There's oh. no question in my mind that that will have to be the case. But national uh, you know, or, or, or regional? Well, uh, I mean, I think that the... The advantage of a national restrictions, uh, national, is that it prevents the current low incidence areas from becoming high incidence areas. That's the problem with the regional uh, approach, is that certainly tier one and uh, also tier two, um, to some extent, don't do a lot. And so uh, inevitably, you just have those areas catching up um, and just ha uh, moving into higher incidence. So 
I do think that uh, a more national approach is better. It's better for those uh, areas with lower incidence. And, and in fact, that sort of levelling up of incidents we have started to see over the last few weeks. Uh, the, you know, we've seen the northwest and parts of the northeast uh, kind of flatten off, uh, which is great news. Um, but we haven't seen the same effects in the south. Um, and so they are kind of unfortunately catching up. Listen, I'm going to come back to you in just a minute, John, but Anushka's just got a bit of data she wants to share with us. Yeah, that's right. We've resuscitated Screeny. I'll try and come back to the things I was going to show you um, earlier, uh, later on in the show, hopefully. But I just wanted to pick up on that idea of how do you actually persuade people to follow the rules and in particular to isolate when they're asked to. I thought it was interesting that Boris Johnson in PMQs today, as Pippa Carrera from The Mirror has tweeted here, suggested that the number of people doing it is way too low. And we've got some polling from JL Partners for Peston on what would make people more likely to actually follow the rules on isolation. People were given different options and asked what they would follow or not. This is a net figure. And actually, the one that gets the highest amount was if they reduce the time that you are asked to isolate from 14 days to 10 or even to seven. After that, increasing financial compensation for people would really help. Clearly, lost earnings would put people off. There seems to be quite a lot of motivation coming from the things that we have in place now, the idea of fines and sanctions. But some of the other things are lower down. So, for example, the behaviour of the public, what your neighbours are doing, less so. Whether or not our leaders are setting an example doesn't seem to encourage people that much. They don't care whether Boris Johnson is behaving himself or not. And bottom of the list, the idea that a vaccine is coming and an end is in sight. Robert. Thanks, Anushka. Um, John, uh, the government is looking at reducing the time that we have to isolate uh, if we're told we've been in contact with somebody uh, who's got the virus. Um, they want to use mass testing to bring it down perhaps to half the 14 days we currently have to isolate. Is, is that a good plan? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I, th I think uh, now that we've got uh, greater uh, testing capacity, I think that's a very good use of it. Um, so I think, uh, you know, uh, perhaps uh, getting people to isolate for um, seven days and then test them, and if they're clear, then allow them uh, to go go about their normal business. I think I think that that is a pretty uh, effective. You know, it's 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 just about as effective as as being 14 days in isolation. So I think that now we've uh, expanded our testing capacity. For me, that would be a very good use of it. Now, look, we're only part of the way into winter. We've got months to go. Um, Let's just say there's a bit of relaxation over Christmas. Um, many scientists think that if that happens, there will inevitably be a rise in the virus again. Um, we're going to be into a second lockdown in January, February, aren't we? I hope not. Um, you know, I think, uh, you know, I, I, as I say, I think that's quite a long way ahead. Um, I think... Uh, I think we might be able to negotiate it without going into another lockdown. I really hope that's the case. How would we do, how uh, would we course, do it? How would we do it without a lockdown? Well, I, when I say a, a lockdown, I mean what we're in now. Mm. I still think we will have to have restrictions in place. Mm. Um, so I don't think we'll be, uh, you know, so I think we'll be asked to uh, work at home wherever we can, um, and uh, you know, restrictions in uh, meeting uh, families, and you know, like like for instance, exactly what's in tier two and, and above, so you, you can't meet others, um, except probably this little window over Christmas when mm. I'm sure we'll relax uh, uh, for some, to some extent. But I, I do think we'll need some restrictions, whether we'll be in a kind of uh, a lockdown where uh, pubs and uh, restaurants and uh, shops are closed. I hope we can manage to get around that and not do that. Um, you know, there are... There are ways... Um, other, you know, first of all, there's... Vaccines are around the corner now. I think that's really fabulous news. Um, and so I think we will start to see vaccines being rolled out probably, you know, hopefully even at the end of this year. But certainly by early next year, I, I think that's very likely. Um, obviously, we'll still need restrictions then. It'll take a very long time for us all to be vaccinated. Mm. Um, and, you know, really the restrictions will be in, need to be in place not until we... not. We, we don't lift the restrictions when we start vaccinating. We'll, have, we'll lift them when we end vaccinating, uh, really. So that means, um, so that so means restrictions of some sort, probably up until the summer, is what you're saying. Some sort of restrictions yeah, up so. until the summer. But uh, I, I think so. I mean, I don't, 
I hope not, but yeah, I think it will be some sort of restrictions for quite some time. Unfortunately, yes, and they'll gradually be lifted um, uh, as as and when we can get away with it. Brilliant, John. As well, I'm not sure it is brilliant prospect as well, but brilliant talking to you is what I meant. Uh, as, as ever, thank you so much for joining.